Why does the black man serve the white man? Why does everything the black man do benefit the white man? Why does the black man say freedom is doing what I want to do? And why is it that everything he wants to do enriches the European? Welcome to the desert of the real. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about the whole, um, like, for some reason when I was hearing you talk, I was thinking about when you have people, like, the, the big thing is, well, black folks don't want to get together. Like, at every time you form an organization, people can't get together. Um, that analogy that I gave about the ten people in the room with the light bulb and the light socket, and then you come back a week later and the room is still dark, you know? Uh-huh. In order for you to um, get to, get along, what's important is what is the individual spirit of each person in that room? Because it's impossible if you have ten people that want to get along that they don't get along. That's not possible. Right. The right. only way that's possible is if you have maybe six of those people want to get along and the other four are just about themselves. To be told. Maybe you may have one or two that are there specifically so that the people don't get along. Huh. So it's easy to say, oh, we need to get along. We need to unify. But the problem is that not everybody is coming in the same spirit. Right. You know, I'm not a problem uh-huh. child. I tend not to be a problem child I've, because I'm used to working with projects and working in groups. So. When you work in groups, right. it's not about you. It's not about your ego. It's about group cohesion because that's the only way you're going right. to get stuff done. Right. You know? This is true. That's the problem. Most people don't have a work ethic because they never worked with people before. Right. And if they have worked with people, it didn't turn out too good because they were too self-centered and too narcissistic. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? True. So that's that's the problem. Yep. It's like how are you going to have group cohesion and get along? And everything cannot be a line in the sand. Like how many lines in the sand do you have? Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to have the ability to compromise to a certain degree. And people hate that word compromise. But you compromise. I tell you one thing, if you got a wife or a girlfriend, you know the, you know exactly what compromise is. Without a doubt. It's not your it's not way or the way. highway all the time. But that huh. comes with working with other people, building with other people. And um, I have to book the show that I want me and you to do on Wednesday. But I can tell people no in advance what it's going to be. It's going to be called Nationhood is Not a Spectator Sport. Right. Everybody wants to sit back right. on the sidelines and well, well, what do you think? Well, can you break it down? Tell me, what are you going to do? What is it? Get in the game. Please. A nation is us collectively. So how is it that one person knows about it and nobody else does? There might be people that know a little bit more, but the whole point is you learn from them by being around them. Right. By interacting yep. with them, socializing with them, you don't learn anything from sitting on the sidelines and like, well, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe if you break it down and give me a PowerPoint, then if if it's really good, then I'll come and be down with you. <laughs> right. You know, that's what we tend to get. It's like sure. nobody. This is not, and this is why I love the BAIO. I love the way that it's structured because there is no leaders. There's no charismatic right. leadership that everybody can go because that charismatic leadership is a trick. What it does mm-hmm. when you have a charismatic leader, what it allows you to do is hide behind them. Yes, sir. because you can see them get out there and twist in the wind while you can just sit back and watch them. Exactly. They're the ones exactly. that's got to step. That's why I've never been, and you know, like I never considered. Oh, you're a leader as a compliment. When every, t- every time somebody wants to push me out to leadership, I feel like I'm being played. Huh. I, never thought of that I don't yet. take that That's as a true. compliment. Huh. That person is not looking at you and going, wow, you're fantastic. You should lead us. What they're doing is saying, wow, let you twist in the wind so I don't have to. Exactly. 
That's been the that way when things fa- when say. things fall apart or if they fall apart, you are the escape hatch because it wasn't me. Hey, I wasn't out there. That was Minister DeWu. That was right. um, Mr. Holipsism. And and that, if you notice, that's what people were trying to do when they were coming at me. They wanted to make they wanted to tie me to the BAIO as if the BAIO was my thing, and I always fought against that. Right. It's not right. my thing. Right. Nationhood is not a concept right. that Mr. Holipsism came up with. Right. Indeed. You know? Indeed. So that's that's Indeed. my basic thing. It's like, what's the spirit of the people who's claiming that they want to get together? Because if you got people that want to get together, they're going to get together. Truth be told. Yeah. Huh. 